Number 5. Fort Drum Concrete Battleship In the Philippines, near the opening of Manila Bay, directly south of the Corregidor Island, lies the highly defended island known as Fort Drum, also known as El Fraile. The sea fort was built by the United States in 1909 as one of the harbor fortifications at the larger South Channel entrance to the bay during the American colonial era. The reinforced concrete sea fort, sometimes known as concrete battleship, was designed, well, like a battleship. Given that it was a sea fort with turrets, it stood apart among the American forts constructed between the American Civil War and the beginning of World War II. It was taken over and held by the Japanese during World War II, but was later recovered after American forces started a fire from the inside, killing 68 Japanese soldiers and rendering it permanently inoperable. Due to the heat, it took five days before American forces could penetrate the stronghold. The now abandoned fort was named after Brigadier General Richard C. Drum, who distinguished himself throughout the American Civil War and the Mexican-American War before passing away on October 15, 1909, the year the fort was built. Cavite City is responsible for the island and the other extant harbor fortifications of Manila Bay. Fort Drum was initially intended to serve as a mine clearance and casemate post. The intent was to flatten the island and then erect a concrete building on top of it that was mounted with four 12-inch cannons in twin mounts, owing to the area's insufficient defenses. The War Department received this and made the decision to switch the 12-inch guns with 14-inch guns installed in dual armored turrets. A deck made of steel-reinforced concrete 20 feet thick protected the fort from above. It was essentially impervious to hostile naval attacks since the external walls were between 25 and 36 feet thick. At the entrance of Manila Bay, Fort Drum's remains still stand, complete with its defunct turrets and 14-inch cannons. It's been abandoned since the conclusion of World War II. Looters began taking scrap metal from the fort in the 1970s to sell. According to a 2009 report, this conduct was still happening. Number 4. Ancient City of Heraklion There were only a handful of historians that actually believed in the existence of Heraklion at the beginning of the 20th century. Most people simply saw it as a legend. Allegedly, the city sank into the ocean 1,500 years ago, following multiple natural disasters. The first time someone claimed to get a look at the mythical city was in 1930, when an RAF commander flying over Abu Kir saw something in the water that appeared to be ruins. The pilot's tale launched a new era of offshore research for this lost city, but with no luck. Technology was not advanced enough to make it possible for archaeologists to find anything. It was like searching for a needle in a haystack. Expert on modern maritime archaeology Frank Gaudio started looking for this city in 1996 with the support of the Hilti Foundation. Gaudio believes that the ground beneath the city had been affected by numerous natural catastrophes such as earthquakes that the soil collapsed, and over time the city began to sink. The late rise of water due to climate change also played a role by taking it even deeper underwater, therefore making it difficult to find. Thonis Heraklion and part of the city of Canopus were discovered mostly submerged in the Bay of Abu Kir at a depth of about 150 feet. Heraklion was once a very important city within ancient Egypt, as this was where all the Greek and other foreign trading ships would pass through. This was understood from the 64 naval ships that were found beneath the waves buried in the sand, most of them being Greek in origin. It wasn't just ships that were discovered, many other things such as bronze statues, statues of Egyptian gods, gold coins, and dozens of small sarcophagi were also found. Gaudio and his team even found the shattered fragments of a colossal red granite statue of a pharaoh over 16 feet tall weighing 5.5 tons. This could be the most crucial city within Egypt at the time as it implemented a tax on imports and export, something that played a major role in building the wealth of Egypt. It also improved relationships with other nations around the world, at the same time opening new trade routes. Do you believe there could be more underwater cities discovered in the future? Tell us in the comments below and hit that subscribe button while you're at it. Number 3. Moon Rocket Engines In a blog post from 2012, Jeff Bezos, the creator of Amazon.com, said on his Bezos Expeditions Venture Fund website that he had personally funded and oversaw an underwater excavation that had discovered portions of the massive F-1 rocket engines used by Apollo 11. Engines from the rocket have been located around 14,000 feet below the surface of the Atlantic Ocean off the coast of Florida. Bezos intended to retrieve one or more of the engines for exhibition, and in 2013 he declared success. Parts from four F-1 engines were hauled back to the surface after spending more than 40 years below. It was hard to pinpoint precisely which flights the engines originated from. Even though Bezos Expedition's website stated that several of the original serial numbers are missing or partially lost, which is likely to make mission identification problematic, 
It's plausible that they're in fact from the SIC stage of Apollo 11. Each significant component of an F-1 engine had some type of serial number on it in order to be tracked through the production process. Every F-1 engine that was flown was hand-built and manually assembled. It would be easy to identify which Apollo missions the recovered components originated from if the serial numbers on them could be decoded. A video depicting portions of the recovery procedure is available on the Bezos Expedition page. The engines are much beyond the reach of human divers at a depth of about three miles deeper than the Titanic's remains. Hence, the operation was carried out using remote-operated vehicles that were operated from the surface. The engines are enormous, measuring 19 feet from nozzle to fuel inlets and weighing around 20,000 pounds for a fully assembled F-1. It took a lot of skill to lift so much mass from the ocean floor, especially when the components had been corroded by seawater and were fragile. Rory Golden, the team's leader, previously collaborated with Dr. Robert Ballard to locate the Titanic, so it's fortunate that they have a lot of experience in underwater exploration and salvage. The team found enough components to build two complete F-1 engines. To combat the consequences of air exposure after being submerged in the ocean for so long, the parts must be restored and stabilized. But Bezos vowed that the rebuilt engines will be a centerpiece of a big museum-quality display. They wanted the hardware to reveal the entire truth, including the details of the 5,000-mile-per-hour re-entry and eventual collision with the ocean's surface. They were quite eager to put the equipment on display in the hopes that it would be inspirational. The engines, or rather the pieces of them because they've been broken apart and degraded, are placed next to a massive engine that is not in operation and serves as a reminder of how they looked before they were launched. The two are highlighted in Apollo, a new permanent display at the Museum of Flight that opened to the public on Saturday, May 20, 2017, along with other NASA artifacts. Number 2. Baltic Sea Anomaly in June 2011, a blurry sonar image of the northern Baltic Sea Anomaly was captured by Peter Lindbergh, Dennis Aberg, and their Swedish Ocean X diving crew. The team was searching for treasure in the middle of the Gulf of Bothnia when their sonar scan revealed an object with peculiar characteristics of unnatural origin, which led to rumors about a sunken UFO being published in tabloid media. Experts and scientists generally agree that the picture most likely depicts a real geological feature. The crew claims that their photograph depicts a circular object with a 60-meter diameter that has elements like ramps, stairways, and other man-made buildings. The next year, the team went back to the location with the intention of getting a clearer shot, but they claimed unexplained electrical interference stopped them. Volker Bruckert, an associate professor of geology at Stockholm University, received samples of stone that OceanX purportedly collected from the site. The majority of the samples, according to Bruckert's examination, are granites, gneisses, and sandstones. One loose fragment of basaltic volcanic rock, which is uncommon on the seafloor, was also present in the samples. According to Swedish geologists Fredrik Klinberg and Martin Jacobsen, the chemical makeup of the supplied samples is similar to nodules that are frequently found at the bottom of the sea, and the minerals discovered, such as limonite and geothite, can in fact be created by nature. Several sites have criticized Ocean X for one of their sonar images. According to the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution, it's unreliable due to a number of distortions that make it virtually useless for locating an underwater structure. According to a story on MSNBC, the graphic outlines intended to imply the fictitious starship Millennium Falcon was put over the solar picture by the tabloids, which might explain why the image has been interpreted as a flying saucer. According to scientist Charles Paul of the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute, the fuzzy sonar picture was probably an outcropping of rock, debris from a fishing trawler, or perhaps a school of fish. The narrative was curious and fun, but much ado about nothing, according to Paul. Goran Ekberg, a marine archaeologist at the Maritime Museum in Stockholm, responded to a photo published by the Swedish newspaper Expressen, allegedly taken by OceanX during a dive to collect rock samples, saying, a natural geological formation can't be ruled out. I agree the finding looks weird since it's completely circular, but nature has produced stranger things than that. The motivations behind OceanX statements, which included plans to transport rich tourists to the location in a submarine, were questioned by Jonathan Hill of the Mars Spaceflight Facility. He suggested that it would have been easy to break off a piece and have it geologically tested, and said that test results showing it was simply rock would not have benefited Peter Lindbergh. In 2012, he reported, whenever people make extraordinary claims, it's always a good idea to consider for a moment whether they're personally benefiting from the claim or if it's a truly objective observation. In a 2019 interview, Peter Lindbergh said there could be a chance for a fresh trip through a television project in which they'd be participating. Number 1. Milky Sea Phenomenon 
The Milky Sea phenomenon, also known as Mareal, is an extremely uncommon type of bioluminescence in which luminescent bacteria interacting with one another generate a persistent glow that causes the water to sparkle gently like falling snow. The bizarre sight is little understood, but a chance encounter between a boat and a mareel in Indonesia has provided scientists with a rare chance to research the Milky Sea phenomena and the methods we use to detect it. On August 2, 2019, something strange happened in the Ganesha vessel. A private yacht commanded by Johan Lemons with a crew of six was traveling between Lombok, Indonesia and the Kokos Keeling Islands. Around 10 o'clock in the evening, they saw that the sea was white. The crew saw that there was no moon, the water appeared to be filled with plankton, and the bow wave appeared black, giving them the impression that they were sailing on snow. Their stories were able to support the satellite measurements taken, confirming an extraordinarily unusual occurrence that is predicted to happen just once or twice a year globally. Researchers examined images and audio recordings of the unique encounter, and their findings were later published in the journal Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. The crew opted to get a bucket of water to have a closer look because they were curious and mesmerized by the light they described as akin to glow-in-the-dark stars or stickers. The light was unaffected by taking a sample and strangely mixing it made the water get darker, the reverse effect of typical bioluminescence. In contrast to a previously proposed surface slick explanation, which indicated that milky sea movement may be caused by luminous microorganisms sitting in a thin coating, Captain Lemons felt that the glow was located around 32.9 feet below the water's surface. The fact that the bioluminescence was unaffected by the movement of the boat suggests that it was located deeper in the water than this. One might assume that bioluminescence is a common occurrence and that there's nothing exceptional about it. Yet throughout history, people have only ever caught a glimpse of it by chance. It's only been investigated in the field once in 1985 when a research vessel came upon one off the coast of Yemen and had equipment on board to collect samples. Although there are still many unanswered concerns regarding the origin, makeup, and occupants of Milky Seas, the Ganesha's discoveries are significant since they've proven that mareels may be seen in satellite images. In the future, this may make it possible for marine scientists to act at the right time and gain a better understanding of what's happening. Thanks for watching. Which one of these discoveries shocked you the most? Tell us in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks again and we'll see you next time for another amazing video right here on American Eye.